They go where no one else dares. They do what no one else can. And when there's only one chance to get it right, they're the ones to call. But they only answer to me. My name is Leaky, and these are my angels. Leaky's angels. My name is Lewis Leaky, and I'm a paleoanthropologist. Not to brag, but few people have contributed more to the anthropological world than my team and I. I was the one who convinced the scientific community that the beginning of mankind was in Africa. Now I can just hear you yelling out to me. But Leaky, didn't Charles Darwin suggest that in like 1871? But we're just gonna skim over that and bring it back to me. My main focus was on the Alderweigh Gorge where I unearthed a number of human and proto-human skeletons. My most important discovery was in 64 when my then wife Mary and I discovered Homo habilis, which was a very human-like skeleton and led us to believe that it was a direct ancestor. This find pushed back human lineage by over a million years. Now enough about me and on with my angels. The first expedition took place in 1960 when Jane Goodall undertook a decade-long field study of chimpanzees in the wild. Her goal was to show how similar chimpanzees' behavior is to humans. This study was so significant because she studied humanity's closest relatives and helped demonstrate the evolutionary relationship between us. So, at age 26, Jane went to live at the Gombe Stream Chimpanzee Preserve. She saw the chimpanzees as friends, not subjects, and gave them names, not numbers, which was unheard of in the scientific community. Within just four months, she had disproven the belief strongly held by archaeologists that only humans used tools. Chimps would break a twig, strip it, insert it into a termite hole, and remove it covered in termites to be eaten. She also saw acts of warfare, murder, brutality, and even cannibalism in what she before believed to be animals with deep-rooted goodness. These behaviours proved that chimpanzees also have a dark side like humans. But more often than not, she saw demonstrations of mutual sharing, helping, and compassion. Families developed deep ties and would even adopt orphans with no relatives and protect them as their own. Jane drastically changed the views held strongly by the scientific community and the world on humanity's closest relatives. The second expedition commenced in 1966 when I sent zoologist Diane Fossey to conduct a long-term field study on the mountain gorillas in the jungles lining the Virunga volcanoes. Her work dramatically changed the scientific and public's views on gorillas. Diane spent 14 years in the jungle studying the gorillas. Over time, she gained their trust by observing them openly from a distance and putting them at ease by imitating typical activities like scratching, feeding, and copying their happy vocalizations. She also found that many human behaviors were shared with gorillas, like having very strong family bonds. She studied the ways gorillas communicated, such as banging on their chest as a symbol of power and strength often used in confrontation. Diane became more than just an observer, but also a member of the family, and she was able to observe them unlike any scientist previously had. After Diane suffered the personal loss of a gorilla she had been studying for 10 years and had a particularly close bond with, being killed by poachers, she created the Digit Fund to raise money for the conservation of gorillas. In 1985, in her cabin in Karasok, Rwanda, she was killed. Her research was a pivotal point in better understanding human beings by observing their close ancestors. The third and final expedition took place in 1971 when Barut Gallicus went to study orangutans deep in the rainforests of Borneo. She wanted to understand the nature of orangutans and preserve the rapidly declining natural habitat. In 71, she arrived at the Tanjang Pudding Reserve in Indonesian Borneo. She was told by many that orangutans were too elusive and wary to be studied, living almost exclusively deep in the swamps. There she set up Camp Leakey, named after her idol, yours truly. She studied physical anthropology, looking to our evolutionary ancestors to help better our understanding of human nature. She recorded over 400 types of food they eat, providing remarkable new detail about the orangutan's diet. She also helped to enlighten the world about the nature of orangutan's social organization and mating systems. She discovered the habitat in which the orangutans live and how they act and react to their surroundings. She also proved that orangutans are not solitary creatures. Barut spent 40 years in Tanjan Pudding, making it the longest continuous study by one dominant investigator of any wild mammal in the world. So those are my angels, the three women who changed the scientific community and the world's views on humanity's closest relatives and ancestors, and in turn, helping us to understand our complex past.